We found them. Alive. We didn't see them, but their scent was fresh. They have to be there somewhere. So they did survive. And now we know exactly where they are. Good work. What next? For now, stay away from their homestead, unless you're invited to return. We've been warned to call first before showing up. No. At least, no more than I expected. Her beta seemed apprehensive, though. Never quite let his guard down. Tyler may be the one who found them. And he may have recognized your scent. Is that a concern? No. It just means they won't trust you next time. We know it might happen. So, we can work with that. Now... One of the guards. We weren't allowed to see him, so we don't know what his symptoms might be, if any. Why didn't they let you see him? Judith said he was resting and she didn't want him to be disturbed. But, judging by the girl's nails when she returned to us, she couldn't have made enough of a wound to transmit anything. Good point. Likely, she got in a good scratch or two, but it would take more than that. Especially with our healing factor. As confused as she was when she came back, I'm surprised she managed to wound anyone. Send the girl back out there in a few days. Increase the dosage by half. I don't want to overwhelm her system. Understood. Make sure she understands your orders, Dahlia. No confusion this time. And if she's cornered again, What if she dies? She served a purpose. And we have other subjects. Got it. Is there anything else? No. We can talk more once you're home. See you soon. How'd the boss take the news? As expected. He wants to give the girl another chance in a few days. Well, I prepped her last time, and I'd rather not fail twice. Bad for my reputation. <laughs> <sighs> I'll handle it. He wants the dosage increased. I'd prefer to do that myself, just in case there's an issue. So if this works, what's the next step? He'll tell you when he wants you to know. Oh, come on, Talia. If you have a concern, bring it up and we'll address it. Well, I was just thinking. Having second thoughts, Bradley? Be careful that your thoughts don't become actions. I'd hate to put you down like a rabid dog. Please. I'm not a common mercenary. My loyalty isn't an issue. I was just wondering where we go from here. He's been acting a little... odd lately. I keep a close eye on him. If you need to worry, I'll let you know. Mason, this library is amazing. You haven't read any of these? Not really. I mean, I flipped through some of them when I was younger, but I haven't really had time to look at them yet. I do know Grandpa wrote a lot about Raven's Landing, including its werewolves. Tyler, look at this. It's a book of practical lichen magic. Hey, this is how we learn how to shift and keep our clothes. Don't mention that to the whelp. I don't think Mom has talked to them about it yet. Oh. Never mind. Oh, here's a book about the town. The notes mention of Patrick Tierney. That's my great-great-grandfather. Patrick Tierney was considered one of the town's founding fathers. Um, uh, he was a sanguine born. Really? Let me see that. Wow. I mean, I knew he was an Irish immigrant, but I figured he was a wolf long before he got here. Okay, now I want to know his story. Gretchen? What? It's interesting. 
<laughs> You'll have to look at the genealogy books. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I'll come back later for those. Oh boy. Mason, you may have just unleashed a monster. Maybe Patrick became a werewolf because he fell in love. Really? Come on. That's what your mom did for your dad. Or he did it for power and influence. Patrick Tierney was a pretty big deal in the logging and woodworking industries around here. After all, it's not called Tierney's Woods for nothing. Take it easy, Welp. Sometimes it's hard to shake it off. You okay, Welp? Just a flare-up with their senses. It happens. I know. You didn't sleep well last night either, which doesn't help. I see you're already looking through the library. Yeah, this has some interesting stuff. I feel like there's a lot more here than we realize. I don't doubt it. Mr. Tierney was quite a historian, and he made meticulous notes, as I recall. I saw a note about Patrick Tierney being sanguine-born. Yes. He was mauled by a Carson wolf. What? Yep. The Carsons and the Tierneys were two of the biggest families in this town. <laughs> You're welcome, Mason, on behalf of my ancestors. Oh, ha ha. There were two major industries in Raven's Landing. The Tierneys were the loggers. The Carsons were the woodworkers running the mill. But they were also the moonshiners. Say that again? <clears throat> the Carson pack was run and shine. Werewolf moonshiners. Think about it. What better group to run a still? And while Moonshine got its name from being made by the light of the moon, in our part of Appalachia, it had a double meaning. So why would my great-great-grandfather want to become a werewolf? For one, it was good business. The Carsons needed the wood and the forest cover to run their still. With Patrick as an ally, the Moonshine still could expand its operations and everyone made a profit. For another, there are benefits to being a werewolf. Something Patrick could have, and would have, used to his advantage. Gretchen, remember that abandoned distillery out in the woods? Huh? The one near the cabin we used to play in as kids. Oh, yeah. Until that day we got caught. Yeah, that one. It's the old Carson still. I didn't know that until I was older and learned the family history. The Carsons gave up moonshining when Oliver's grandfather got older. But he shared a lot of his stories. Wow. I remember Tyler telling me about the area being known for moonshining, but never that the pack was involved. Well, it's not the most positive piece of family history. Why here, though? Because of the location? Exactly. Being on the river, with a major trading post and a logging empire. Plus, when the first werewolves came here, they set things up to keep most people at bay. Dammed up the river, created the port, and voila. Like a cover. Or a sanctuary. Let's just say Raven's Landing has been hiding her secrets for a long time. Ravens are associated with wolves. Did that influence the town name, I wonder? More than likely. All right, that's enough of the town's history for now. What we're looking for is information about our recent visitor and what could have controlled them. Judith and I have combed through most of Mom's books. And the only thing we found is, well, it doesn't make any sense, but... What do you mean? Go ahead. I found a reference in Mom's lunar magic books. We think it's more alchemy than magic, but still. Okay, why doesn't it make sense? Because it shouldn't exist. The formula, and others like it, were destroyed by the Council generations ago. What's that, Welp? Oh, right. We haven't talked about that yet. The Lycan Council is the international governing body for the werewolves, formed as part of the treaties after the Pack Wars. They're the ones who manage the liaisons and other operatives. The idea is to keep us hidden, keep us safe, and help us live in peace with humans. And they do not tolerate anything that could jeopardize that. Yes, they tend to be more shoot-first, ask-questions-later than open to discussion. When the Council was formed, one of the first things they did was to erase as many records of these formulas as they could. They were too dangerous in the wrong hands. You see, part of the reputation werewolves had for being monsters was the creation of sanguineborns and the alchemy behind controlling them. Certain packs, or individuals, would create a sanguineborn wolf and then control them using alchemy. They sent them to attack villages, ordered them to kill people, all of the things that made the legend stick. 
It was a way of controlling the humans. It also divided the werewolves into the true wolves and the mongrels. I'm sure you can guess which ones the Sanguineborns were. So how did the person who controlled our visitor figure it out? If the council removed the formulas from record, there's not much to go on, right? Well, you can never truly erase something from history. After all, the written record doesn't account for family stories passed down by word of mouth. If someone looked hard enough, or pieced together enough clues, they might find something that put them on the trail. But yes, the records on these formulas are sparse. I mean, there's practically nothing. A few ingredients here and there, but nothing solid. What if this werewolf had the time to do the research? That's possible, but they'd also have to have time for practical application. And they'd have to be experimenting. Where would they get test subjects? What did you say, Welp? I hate to say it, but that's a good point. They're taking humans. Maul them, leave them somewhere to turn or die, conveniently find them later and take them in. I'm sorry, Welp. I'm thinking out loud. I don't mean to suggest that... Anyway... With two new allies in the police force, this wolf could cover their tracks. Bradley and Talia can either interfere with the investigations, bury them in red tape, or hide the evidence altogether. Likely why those two replaced Detective Pierce at the police department. If I know Shannon, she would never go along with this. I agree. She'd have fought them, tooth and nail. So why do you think this is linked to the wolf that mauled the whelp? My guess is that they're either intimidating packs in the area or they're specifically coming after our pack for one reason or another. But there's not another pack nearby. The closest one is in Martindale. The Silva pack. And according to Talia and Bradley, there was an incident that's under investigation. And I think Vincent might be dead. Someone killed their alpha? They didn't say it outright, but it was implied. What happened to his pack? I don't know. Talia and Bradley said they were scattered, and they don't know where they are. Which could be a ruse. The whole story could be. I'll be right back. Okay, maybe creating new wolves from random humans is the plan, but why? What would they gain, other than building a pack that they can control? Power without effort. Think about it. This wolf wouldn't have to spend time gaining their trust. They instantly would have a pack of wolves they could control. Do we know if anyone else has gone missing? No, that's something we'd have to track down. We found the whelp in Tierney's woods. It's far enough from town to give some cover, but Mason's scent and our pack scent would be all over the place. And we haven't found any other sanguineborns or human remains anywhere. So where are the rest of them? Could this wolf have placed the whelp here? For what purpose? As a trap. I'm sorry, Welp. I'm, I'm not trying to... But it makes sense. It makes sense if this werewolf is someone we know. Someone with a vendetta. Mom? No, it's not possible, Tyler. We would have sensed him or smelled him in the forest. Not if his wolves brought the whelp here after they were mauled. Mason never met him. He wouldn't know his scent. <sighs> Should we try to get in touch with Shannon? No. I think she'd be risking her life if she talked to us. It's better to see what we can find out on our own. What about Miles? Since he's a vampire, he has some connections that we don't. Good point. Reach out to him and see what he says, especially about any other missing persons in the area. Mason, you talk to Tripp down at the bar. See if he's heard anything. Yeah, well... Yes, we're friendly with the vampires. We don't have cookouts on the weekend or anything like that, but we aren't mortal enemies. Yeah, I know the movies and books don't... Look, never mind. You'd be surprised at what you don't know. You've met Tripp? Yeah, he's a vampire. Disappears for a while and changes his name, claiming to be the son or nephew of the owner. That's also how he gets away with saying family owned. <laughs> The name Trip is an inside joke. This is the third time he's owned the bar. <laughs> yeah, we can be fairly practical sometimes, Welp. 
All right, sounds like we have a plan. And we need to act fast. The Welp's first full moon is coming up. If their sire is using alchemy to make sanguineborns they can control, then they'll show up soon. And we need to be ready. Everything okay, Gretchen? Ashley's not answering her phone. Don't panic yet. We'll find out what happened. Yeah. Maybe she doesn't have her phone. Or the battery died. Or maybe she can't answer because... Be because... Gretchen, don't jump to conclusions. We don't know that anyone in the Silver Pack is dead. Yeah. You're right. It could be anything right now. I left a message and sent her a text. She's good about responding. Tyler's right. We can't assume anything. I know. I know. We've made plans to talk to Miles. Since he lives in Martindale, maybe he's heard something. We'll also reach out to Trip. Don't give up yet, Gretchen. <sighs> okay. Let's go home. We've talked about a lot today, and we have plans to make. Judith, do you have a minute? Sure. What is it? Is that invitation still open? What invitation? To join the pack. Mason. I need to be able to talk with the pack via the telepathic link. I can communicate with the guards and let them know if I find something. I can't do that as a lone wolf. That's not a good reason to accept our invitation. Then how about this one? You, Tyler, and Gretchen are the only family I have here. Grandpa is gone, and my parents are halfway across the country. I know we're not blood-related, but chosen family is just as important. I need to be able to help protect you. To help protect the pack. And it's long past time for me to stop being an honorary pack mate. You're right. It is. Mason Tierney, we invite you to join the Carson Pack and become a member of our family. Do you accept our invitation? I accept, and agree to become part of the Carson Pack. Tonight, then? Yes. The sooner the better. All right. Tonight it is. We'll make the arrangements. You know, for as long as I had hoped you would eventually join us, I hate that it's because of this situation. Well, something had to give, and I can't be a lone wolf forever. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Tyler and I will gather everyone. We'll let you know when everything is ready. Okay. I'll be waiting. Thanks, Judith. Hmm. <laughs> You're welcome, Mason. You've been family for a while now. This just makes it official. Should I call you Mama Judith now? <laughs> no. Mom will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon. Okay. All right, let's go. We have an initiation to prepare for tonight. Huh? <clears throat> Looks like my lone wolf days are over. Welcome to the family, Mason. You made us wait this long, and now you want us to hurry it up. Sheesh, some people. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Welp? No, I can't let you attend. This is pack business. We might be looking out for you, but... It sounds harsh, but... You're not one of us. Yes, I plan to leave you at the house, under lock and key, front door and your room. We'll hear anybody trying to get in. Welp, listen to me. I cannot let you attend, and I cannot bring you into the pack without discussing it with them first. There is too much going on right now to even think about it. Mason is different. We've invited him several times to join our pack. That discussion has already been settled. You are a different case. I'm not trying to shut you out, Welp. 
This isn't something I can let you see yet. It's nothing unusual, Welp. Werewolf packs are secretive for a reason. Our pack has had a hard time trusting people after what happened several years ago. Let's go home. Mason, I'll call you. Okay, I'll be ready. See you all soon. I think I'll take the scenic route home, clear my head a little. You three go on ahead. We'll catch up later. Look, Mom isn't trying to shut you out. She's right. The pack can't handle inviting someone we barely know to join us. For, for all we know, you're a spy. Yeah, I know you're not, but do you see my point? We can't risk it right now. It's nothing personal. We have to protect the pack first. But that doesn't mean we aren't going to protect you. I'll come back to the house as soon as I can get away from the ritual. Mom's going to need some rest after it's done, so I'm taking first watch. Let's go home. It's been a long day already. And I bet you didn't drink your swamp water tea yet. <laughs> Hey there, Will. Can't sleep? Oh, you woke up and couldn't go back to sleep. Did you have another nightmare? Not exactly. Here, have a seat. No, I'm just recovering. From what? The initiation ritual. It's exhausting for an alpha. Why is that? You know, I always wondered why Oliver would be so exhausted when we brought a new packmate into the family. I thought it was the physical exhaustion of the ritual, but it's not. It's the emotional weight of it. Knowing that you have another person who is depending on you to keep them safe. Another soul that you've sworn to protect, to be responsible for. That's where the exhaustion comes from. Look, I want to apologize for being short with you earlier. You had every right to ask why, and I shouldn't have snapped at you. It's just that we can't... Oh? Tyler explained it. No, you don't owe me an apology. The situation with your sire is... A lot to deal with. And there is so much we don't know. Hmm? Oh, Sire just means the person who mauled you and made you a werewolf. It's a bloodline connection. Yes. Whoever mauled you still has a connection to you. For now. Joining a pack or becoming a ward of a pack will sever that bond. What's a ward of the pack? Well, it's an old tradition, stemming from before the pack wars. Back then, werewolves weren't safe as lone wolves. But they didn't want to join a pack and then realized they didn't agree with their ways. Pack bonds are meant to be strong, and they are very difficult to break. Even when it's necessary to do so. So becoming a ward was a way of testing the waters, so to speak. Figuring out if this is the kind of group the wolf wanted to be a part of, if this is the kind of person the pack wanted in their family. And in the meantime, the lone wolf was safer than being on their own. Sometimes it didn't work out, or it was a temporary alliance, and the ward asked to be released. Sometimes it did, and the alpha would bring them into the pack via the initiation. Yes, werewolves have always been cautious, at least a little even when we were at each other's throats. <laughs> the pack wars are a subject for another day. Better yet, Mr. Tierney's library would have more information than I can give you.
Who was my sire? Hannah, Gretchen's mother. Yes. Oliver's mother, Amelia, asked her to do it. Aside from being the pack healer, Hannah was also a sanguine born, and she could walk me through everything. Why not Oliver? Well, you had the nightmares. Oliver didn't want to be in my dreams. Well, not like that. It would have broken his heart to cause me any pain, emotional or otherwise. But he did stay with me. I woke up in his arms. He was exhausted. Hadn't left my side since the mauling. <laughs> You're starting to understand why I miss him so much, huh? Oliver was my whole world. If there are such things as soulmates, he was mine. <clears throat> you said that you remembered something else? That's why you can go back to sleep? Do you want to talk about it? Okay. You remember hearing someone say a name? What was the name? What? Welp, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? If that's the case, this makes perfect sense. <laughs> 